Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today what we're going to be doing is rebuilding the clutch master cylinder on the or for the Honda Valkyrie. It's a 97 Honda Valkyrie if you're new to the channel you've not seen the Valkyrie yet it's over there and um, we do obviously already have the master cylinder assembly uh, removed from the bike I'm not probably not going to bother taking the mirror off um, some things to note, your banjo bolt, the stock one is a 12 millimeter and the Allen keys, I believe, <laughs> the, the number used to be on the paint on this, but it's been used so much over the years. Let me go check what it is. So it's a size five Allen key, which was my guess, but I just wanted to be sure. Um, and the screws to remove the uh, reservoir cap, our GIS, as is the little screw to remove the clutch switch, uh, which is obviously is important to be careful of that clutch switch. Clutch switches are pretty easy to break, as are brake switches, um, so you'll see that now. You're going to want to take out these two bolts right here, uh, and also obviously loosen this off, and I'm pretty sure, whoops, there's probably going to be a clutch switch, yeah, and you're going to want to remove that clutch switch as well. So one, two, and three, four bolts. You obviously do not have to have uh, this already opened and drained, but I do already have it off because these bolts were a little bit mangled. So I just want to make sure I could actually split this open and we could uh, get to rebuilding it. So yeah. So yeah, when you're removing all those, just be careful. And obviously if you have not already drained uh, the brake fluid, as I have, well, I didn't actually drain this. Uh, Alex sent the bike to me drained, so I believe he was already looking into this. Um, but the system was already drained, which is handy. Um, I'm just picking up where, where he left off, pretty much. So that's where we're going to go from today, and we'll see how we go. Uh, the kit I will be using today is a All Balls uh, 18 dash. 4023 and I will also have I do have some waterproof grease as well which you'll see later but just to, to show you that's the 18-4023 um, obviously during the course of this video you'll find out does it work um, <laughs> so we'll figure that one out okay so first and foremost what we're going to do is pop this bolt off which is a size 10 it's already quite loose and then you want to remove this guy here which is just a flathead screwdriver and the reason we're doing this is so we can get the actual clutch lever off uh, and honestly this clutch lever will probably be staying off i'll show you why in a second if you can't already see it no you can't already see it i'm blocking it there we go so this also would usually you'd want grease and whatnot on that uh, make sure that you don't lose a bush out of here if there is a bush which there is a bush right there um, so I'm going to pop that out just to show you. So there's your bush. Um, we'll grease that up later. This is your actuating piston uh, for the actual clutch handle itself. So that's what pushes your fluid essentially, which is quite dirty. This needed greasing up too. But the reason this handle will not be staying on there is because of uh, the skull. I, I, I'm not a fan of uh, putting skulls places like that. So then what we want to do is in here you have a little seal and we want to get that out. Uh, usually you can just pull this out. I'm just going to move the camera here for a second. I have a new one. I'm just going to make sure I have a new seal before I go tear in this one. I usually just tear them out when I have a new one because I'm, I'm not putting in the new boot. Yeah, I do have a new boot. So. There you go. So literally just rip that out of there with the pliers or something. And now you'll see you have a, I don't know, can you see that? Let me just, in there there's a little snap ring. Uh, so we're gonna pop that out as well. So I did manage to get the snap ring removed. <clears throat> and I'll show you how that works now. So essentially this is the bore of your clutch master cylinder. Okay, I'm gonna clean this 
before I put it back together, of course. It's actually, the board's looking pretty clean. There's no tarnishing, no rust, and that's what you want to kind of look down in there and just make sure there's no, you know, pitting or whatever else. Pitting, pitting and anything like that in one of these is very bad. Now, how this comes apart is first your spring, and actually, that rubber feels pretty good. But essentially, the spring, and I want to try focusing on this, but it's hard to record. Spring goes in there with the little kind of buffer. Okay. This then is the actual piece. Come on, autofocus work. This is the piece that actually like pushes your fluid, say, okay, and the spring returns it. <clears throat> so springs get tired over time and those channels are where your fluid is driven through, okay. And then this seal, of course, which actually, again, this seal feels pretty good, but we'll be replacing it. Um, that seal is what seals the fluid from escaping, essentially. And that pushes in onto, as you can see, see how that pops out? When uh, there's nothing holding it. Then on top of that, you get that to, to stay. And what was interesting is when I was removing this snap ring, uh, it really didn't return, the spring didn't return, so I think the spring is kind of tired, or the bore is dirty. Snap ring goes on there, and then you push it all down and snap it in place. That's all there is to it, it's actually quite simple. Um, if your spring gets stuck in there like that one is now, just grab a pushy pokey tool and pushy pokey it out. But genuinely, this, the funny thing is that's that's as easy <clears throat> as a <clears throat> excuse me clutch master cylinder is. Essentially, what you have is this guy here and this guy here. This moves on that spring. <laughs> moves on that spring like so. I'm not worried about that because I have a new one uh, right here. So we will obviously be using all the new stuff. But reassembly is as easy as disassembly um, what we're going to do is use our new spring our new cap essentially so we can actually open these up now you know i take a lot of things for granted because uh, obviously i grew up in a <clears throat> in a house that my, my dad worked in construction and also worked on vehicles and whatnot himself. So I will say, if you're using a knife like this, always cut away from yourself. Just in case it slips, you don't want to be pointing it at yourself. And when you put it down, close it. Um, I've learned that the hard way. This is my nice new spring. So this doesn't snap into place or anything. The other one was just kind of stuck there. But since you'll sit that on there when it goes back into uh, to the actual tube itself, which would be nice. Look at it, look at that lovely new spring. So we'll assemble that there. <clears throat> to get this guy off here, what you're gonna wanna do is have some form of pick tool. I like to save these just in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong. And again, with this pick tool, aim it away from, from yourself, and there goes that. If you're using it, because those pick tools uh, I've stabbed myself with multiple times. Um, not on purpose, generally. Well, not generally, always. And then to get this back on is a little bit of a pain in the butt. I, again, like, like to use my pick tool. <clears throat> Just to show you the type of scum, I'll try to show you the type of scum that's coming out of the inside of the actual reservoir in this. I don't know if I'm gonna focus on the tip of this. Probably not. I'm gonna try to show you here. So I, had, I had like a big chunk of scum on top of that there. I don't know, can you see in there? It doesn't want to focus on the deeper bit. No, probably not. Probably not, folks. Hold on. So you see in that corner in there, all that kind of mud? It's currently what I'm cleaning out. Uh, my bore, I have already cleaned. Okay, and hopefully, this is very difficult to film in there when I'm trying. So you can see there, I've cleaned out all in there. Um, 
So what I want to do is finish cleaning this. I just want to show you that scum. Well, that scum in there is what you really want to make sure you get out because that is what will go back in. Like coming out, it's disgusting. Um, I use a little pick tool to kind of loosen it up, and then I just wash it out with the brake cleaner, or uh, if I can actually get in there with the. My words are failing me with a uh, blue paper towel thing. Um, one thing I would say is you don't want to be too abrasive cleaning these, so you know don't go in there with like mad powerful Dremel brushes or whatever else. Like a little bit of brushing is fine. I actually found this brush uh, in the shop. I think it's originally for cleaning guns, uh, but it's very useful for cleaning these things as well. Um, so that's something that I have found as well over here is gun cleaning kits. Great for cleaning out these. Uh, these kind of things. So that's nearly clean there now. Anyway, I'll come back when this is fully clean and we'll reassemble. Yeah, hey, alrighty, we got that clean, as you can see. Very much cleaner in there now. Um, the what I what I do to clean that I that I find easiest is I'll get a piece of blue paper and I'll actually jam it down in there with my my little pin. And that lets you get into all the corners and I just kinda without poking through the paper. I wiggle it around to try to get everything. So now we're ready kind of for reassembly. Not kind of, we are ready for reassembly. And the first things I like to do, the first thing I like to do is compare everything. So this is the old crappy boot, uh, which is really cracked and horrible. It uh, doesn't really feel like rubber anymore. And it is roughly the same size as the new uh, boot. This is genuinely, this feels terrible. So obviously we'll be using the new one. Um, I will obviously clean these in a second too. But first things first, just check your bore one more time for any obstructions. There are none, so we're good. I wish that kind of sat in there a little better. The old one had held a bit nicer. But anyway, drop in your spring. It's going to be a pain in the buttocks. Uh, you can lube up all the rubber pieces as well. Actually, I'm going to do that. Uh, it's advisable to lose, lube up all the rubber pieces with um, brake fluid as you assemble it. I do have brake fluid over here. So anything for, for brake systems, generally just use the fluid you're going to actually fill it with, I suppose, if that makes sense. This is going to be bathed in brake fluid forever very soon. So it makes sense to kind of obviously steep it in brake fluid. So that's our spring in thing in. As you can see, I cleaned this as well. Cleaned it nice and actually a little bit I forgot to do, so I'm going to do that real quick. Now that is clean. It's really important to, when you're putting these back in, kind of making sure you don't leave any burrs or sharp edges or anything on it. Then this obviously drops right in on top of the spring. And you kind of want to push that, and make sure you're getting kind of engagement on the, um, how do you say it? Engagement on the seal, the new seal. You want to make sure that that seal is kind of good. And then the new snap ring, you snap ring, literally snap ring pliers, you get your, hold on, I'm going to show you this properly. So that is a snap ring. This one is an internal snap ring. So you have external and internal. They clamp from both sides, essentially. Okay, so uh, I accidentally turned off my microphone, but once you have your snap ring back in, you can grab your piston, pop it into the cup it normally sits in, and actually test your actuation and my snap, snap ring popped out. So it's a good thing I tested that, because uh, it's obviously not seating, seating in there properly. So we'll try that again. And we're back with a properly seated snap ring. It was actually me, it wasn't the new snap ring, I tried it again. 
and we now look good. So you just want to make sure your snap ring is seated all the way. I know you're not going to be able to see this in a million billion years, but seated down in there and it's actually flat out against the edges. And like I said, grab that and just do all your testing. Now, the next piece, I don't know does everyone else do this this way. I've just always done it. It's worked very well for me. Is I actually grab my boot here and I pack it full with the uh, grease. I do some waterproof grease here. And th this boot, uh, what it does, so you literally just want to fill that up. A little cup of grease is it seals all of the inner workings uh, from the outside and the piston runs through it. So grease isn't going to hurt it. It's only going to help it, you know. Once you have your cup full of grease, you want to seat it back. And this is a bit of a pain to seat. Uh, if I had some plastic tools, I would definitely use the plastic tools, but for now I'm just going to kind of shove it in there. I think that's good, like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble the uh, actual clutch lever, the old one. And how you do that is you grab, I'm just gonna roll this in a little bit of grease. You grab your roller pin, and don't worry about grease, grease wipes off. Uh, you wanna actually make sure that stuff rides smoothly in there, so that's the main thing. Um, and then once you have that seated back in there, you just push that pin in, and that pin goes home. And then how this all goes together is this guy, this is really hard to video, I apologize. We're gonna try it. This piston pushes down in there. This sits in to there. Then you get, like I said, I'm not worried about getting too much grease on anything. You can clean grease later. That pin is in there. This is actually exceptionally difficult to do while trying to show it on video. That pin goes in there. We grab our screwdriver. And you can see all that grease just billowing out, but I'm, I guarantee you in the long run, that grease will make everything feel better and last a lot better. You can just clean off all the excess. Now you do also have your little lock guy here, so that, that's important to go on. The locking nut. So pinch that up a little bit. And essentially what you should have is a nice, not only actuation of the clutch, but a really nice return. And you can actually see down in there, well, we'll try to get you to see, you probably won't be able to see it. But you can actually see everything kind of moving happily. Uh, the other thing is this boot is supposed to sit up onto these ridges, so I'm gonna try to do that. This is something I've always struggled with, um, kind of after the fact, getting it to sit up on there. All right. But yeah, that is basically the whole thing done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you what you kind of want your final product to look like. Stay there, please. So we do have your diaphragm here, uh, which I'm gonna give one more clean because it seems to have developed some white stuff. Okay, I have this balance, so hopefully you can see it, but how you put this back together is you get your cleaned diaphragm, and you pop that in there, like so. Then you wanna get your cover plate, that pops into the diaphragm. I actually, what I usually do is I put this onto the diaphragm first. I was just trying to show you step by step. It, it, it fits a lot better. And then we put on our cap and our two brand new screws that came with the kit, uh, which honestly is probably my favorite part of the kit because these screws are often a pain in the ass to get. These are JIS screws also, uh, which is why they are generally destroyed because people think they're Phillips heads and use Phillips heads on them. So that's that done. And I can just show you here. So this is generally how these end up 
uh, like that. That's the old ones. That's why I'm really happy that new ones came with it. It's just nice. Um, and now we have this ready to go back onto the bike. Uh, I put this back in just to keep everything clean. And there's our nice working thing. So we're going to go over here. This is going to be poor light. I apologize. I just want to uh, show this going back onto the bike real quick. This is the uh, Honda Valk Valkyrie. Um, the one thing I will say is obviously do not uh, over, you know, don't, don't, I would not recommend tightening back on the clutch fluid line, which I have left to one side here, uh, because I do not plan on reusing that particular clutch uh, line hose. I'm going to get a uh, HEL line slash hose. So let's just, uh, that's annoying. <laughs> so also make sure that you're putting this on right. This is the clamp plate for the reservoir and there is an upside on it. Um, just make sure it's facing the right way. I'm gonna put this back on exactly where it was pretty much. The nice thing about this is you, you reposition this. I usually just tighten it in enough that I can kind of still move it around a little bit. Um, so I can kind of get my clutch handle where I want it. So right now we're just gonna, gonna put it there. That feels kind of right. There we go, that'll do. The nice thing about uh, this is obviously it's, it's extremely easy to reorient this if you're not happy with where it is. And you don't need to over tighten these bolts because obviously you're not going into a big lump of steel. And then you also, hopefully you could see that actually I didn't reposition you. Yeah, you could. And then there's, I still left this screw in place here. And this is for the clutch switch I mentioned already. You want to just make sure you're nice and gentle with the clutch switch. That's how that will end up looking right there. And that's it. Uh, like I said, I'm leaving that off right now. Um, but that is a rebuilt, oh God, the focus. That is a rebuilt clutch master cylinder on a Honda Valkyrie. So that is it, really quite simple. Um, basically all you're really changing is these two rubber bits, your wiper seal we'll call it, um, your actual top hat uh, seal, uh, your spring and your kind of push plate on the spring. So we've changed all those, there's the push plate and there's my old spring. So pretty much you're taking it apart to change these bits. Uh, the kit actually was really good, very happy with it, especially the fact it came with those two new screws for the actual reservoir cap because they're really hard to get generally and they also always get absolutely destroyed. Um, also very happy to get this skull thing off the bike because I think that one looks a lot better. But really this is one of those things I often see people are nervous to take on like clutch master cylinder and brake master cylinder rebuilds. It's easy to test if you've done it right. It's actually pretty easy to tackle. One thing you will need to get obviously is snap ring pliers. They're kind of an essential for this, which is something that everyone doesn't have in their garage. But other than that, like you need basic tools. For the Valkyrie, you need a JIS screwdriver and you need an Allen key uh, to, take, to take that off. The rest of it is, it's literally pulling out the rubber cap now, oh, and you need some grease. So, very simple job. Very simple job. Um, worth doing every now and again because, I mean, rubber, rubber degrades. Uh, just with age and with exposure to sunlight and just with age, rubber dries up, cracks. Um, so, highly, highly recommend doing that every couple of years, uh, if, especially if you're using your bike a lot, because just with the repeated cycles, it's gonna wear a little bit. Everything likes to be re-greased. Even if you just get in there, pull that kind of crappy rubber top cap, top hat, little, little, little hat off. Little, 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 so I call it a little top hat, see? It's a little, little hat. Um, but even if that's all you do, that will actually preserve, preserve everything quite nicely just re-greasing everything. I'll make it feel a lot better too. So uh, highly, 
highly recommend doing it. If you're watching, thank you very much for watching. As always, a special thank you to all of my patrons. If you found this video helpful, please do let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to see anything else, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, I will also be doing a brake master cylinder rebuild. I got the rebuild kit for that. Very similar, just as straightforward, just as easy to be honest. And yeah, um, we're kicking back off the Valkyrie mission as we speak. I'm going to be delayed slightly because I have to go to Colorado uh, for two weeks for work. So obviously I won't be able to make videos there because I'll be working. And also my company don't let me edit on my laptop because it's a work laptop and they don't let me put anything like that on there, which is kind of sad, but it's also true. And I don't have a, I don't have a laptop. I have a computer, desktop computer, so I can't bring that with me, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching. Um, like I said, please do leave a comment. Please leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Adios. Out to the crew. What's a job? Actually, there you go. What's a job you've seen me do on this channel that you were like, oh, I don't want to ever try that. Then you saw me do it and you're like, well, if this moron can do it, I can definitely do it. Yeah, what video is that? Let me know. Bye, Outro Crew.